Early voting in Georgia's heated Senate race starts tomorrow with Democrat Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker in a dead heat. Democrats spending former President, sending former President Obama to the Peach State to rally some support. Joining me now is former Georgia Congressman Doug Collins. So you get the Democrats sending out Obama. Uh, you get Republicans sending out their heavy hitters, including, by the way, the governor, who's extraordinarily popular, just had a, right. a blowout win in Georgia. How much of a difference are these supporters going to make? Well, I think they're making a difference as far as getting out the vote. That's the key now. Persuasion is really over. I mean, the persuadability of saying you won't vote against Warnock or vote against Walker or vote for Walker, you know, those kinds, of, it's just at a point now to where I think there's just a saturation point. It's now deciding how many of our voters can we get out. So the Democrats, I think it's very interesting for, us, for a sitting senator, for an incumbent, to be who have been outspending uh, Walker, Herschel Walker, by a lot of money. Warnock is still struggling to get voters to the poll. The Democrats just are not, you know, Responding like you would have expected them to around a sitting senate, uh, sitting senator. How and War Walker is pulling the Republicans along, and I think Brian Kemp's uh, coming along, cutting an ad, appearing with Herschel Walker, which they had not done before the general election, is going to make a difference. I think Republicans understand the the real issue down here. Yeah, and the Republicans in Georgia, I know that the the uh, Republicans elsewhere in the nation uh, didn't have this enthusiasm that Republicans were hoping for, but in Georgia they certainly did, and and in Florida they did. So there were pockets where it made a difference. Now, the, the big question, though, is a lot of people say, what difference will this particular race make in the Senate? Because uh, no, matter, no matter what happens, uh, you know, the Democrats can always use now because of the, the split. Even if, if uh, uh, the, the Republican wins in Georgia, uh, you'd still have a divided Senate, that, whose the tie of which could be broken by the vice president, which would make it a, a Democratic victory. So what difference does it make? Well, it's a huge difference. We need to elect Herschel Walker to keep the Democrats from having what is what is known as a complete majority in the Senate. If they get that 51st vote, that means that they will control the committees. There's no longer the power sharing agreement that we've seen for the last, you know, almost two years now in the Senate, which makes it v much harder for Democrats to bring out legislation to get even appointments and judges through, because each committee is split 50-50, which means if there's an even vote, it has to come to the floor, which adds time uh, and, and even weeks possibly to even get legislation passed. So. It is crucially important from a Republican standpoint to keep that power sharing agreement. Now that we've taken the House and are able to stop a lot of this uh, stuff from the Biden administration, I think it's critical to keep that power sharing agreement. So Republicans, if you're out there sitting on your hands saying, well, it's, I just don't know if I should go vote, you got to get up, you got to go vote for Herschel Walker if you're wanting to keep that power sharing agreement, which again makes it harder for Schumer just yes. to do whatever he wants to do in the Senate. That's a great point. And also, by the way, it's setting up for 2024. In 2024, Democrats are going to have a <laughs> very tough battle because they have to defend 21 seats to Republicans only having to defend 10 seats. So uh, it, it could really set the stage for 2024, right? Last word. Uh Oh, exactly. If, if we set this up in that way, then you're always looking to that next election cycle. But it also sets it up to where people can understand that governing is around the corner. Conservative governments can be had in 2024 because we can take the Senate, keep the House, and hopefully gain the presidency. And then we're back to putting conservative governments back in the United States. Doug Collins, have a wonderful, wonderful uh, holiday weekend. We thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it.